Hey, are you looking to upgrade your key life areas and evolve to a higher level of existence? To practically harness personal growth and spirituality in a crazy, busy, imperfect world? Then you've come to the right place. My name is Prash and this is Urban Spirituality, the show which uniquely fuses ancient wisdom with contemporary self-growth and spiritual disciplines to deliver value-added tools, traits, and insights to help you unleash your fullest potential. We always keep it real, featuring authentic, unfiltered dialogue with guests from diverse backgrounds to inspire, entertain, and enlighten all who listen. So get ready for your dose of urban spirituality. Be present and let's dive in. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, aliens and earthlings, welcome to another episode of the Walk on the Wise Side show with me, your host, Prash K, with, as always, an interesting, insightful, really cool, and in this case, colorful, special guest in the house, who I cannot wait to share with you. I want to introduce her a little bit and tell you a little bit about who this person is. This lady here to my left works with women in particular who want to overcome negativity and reclaim their self-worth so they feel worthy of themselves. She is an emotional expert. This is her tag, by the way. She has a unique ability to combine coaching, NLP, and energy healing along with emotional expertise to help people rise above their challenges, to bring out the best in themselves, and to help all of us to manifest the life we truly deserve. She's highly qualified, being the Tony Robbins route through Robbins Medenes. She's worked through theater healing, especially recently with the amazing Raspreet Sagu. She's had NLP training, Akashic record training, geez, and the list goes on. I'm so delighted to have with us this beautiful, powerful light worker who also enjoys really good color. Please put your hands together for the one, the only Puja. Haleshwar. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for that amazing introduction. I kind of feel like you should have had some rocky music in the background. Yeah. There. <laughs> Make sure we do that. And thank you all for having me. I hope you get value from this talk and I hope in some way it makes a positive difference to your life. Totally. We've got to make sure we do that. So folks, uh, we are rocking and rolling now and we want to get straight into the heart of this matter. And I want to start, I want to start by sharing something with all of you look at this who knows what this is of course we all know what it is <laughs> why am i waving this furiously in front of the camera because can anybody figure this out by the way why am i waving a remote control in front of the camera okay anybody who gets this right is going to get some kind of beautiful gift of chocolates uh, sent to them so look sharp why have i got this all right, time's up. If you notice, there is a mute button there, right here. There's a mute button there. This mute button does what? It stops the audio. And today, we want to talk about silencing our inner critic. We want to talk about pressing the mute button on this, on our inner critic, our, men, our mind's ability to sabotage ourselves and everything we actually want to do. Pooja? Tell them about it. Okay. So, what, is, uh, what is it? What is, yeah. what is self-sabotage? What is the inner critic? So our self-sabotage is when one part of us is in conflict with another part of us. Okay. So the inner critic tends to be the bigger part of us. So there's a little part of us that wants something different. We want to do better. We want to be better. We want to achieve more in our lives. Right. But then we have this, this big inner critic that can be almost like a dark cloud that's constantly hanging over you and giving you a million reasons why you can't do what it is that you want to be doing. And ultimately, it's that critic that takes control of your life because it controls every choice, every decision you make. Um, mm -hmm. And then that impacts the quality of your life. Mm -hmm. Let's take this a little bit deeper. This is not a new subject. The inner critic and self-sabotage, um, our inner negative voice, uh, the evil angel, it's known by many names. This has some history, right? This is not something recent. 
the Western world didn't suddenly discover this. This goes back oh, deep, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And I mean, it stems where this critic stems from is our model of the world, right? So we grow up and we absorb other people's beliefs. We absorb mm -hmm. experiences in our life. So uh, it could be when you're a child and you're at school and you get bullied, you know, it could be your parents' beliefs. Like, you know, you have these old wives tales, like you shouldn't right. do that, you shouldn't do this. And we get programmed with these beliefs and all of these things kind of take over um, and then that ultimately becomes our internal dialogue. And that internal dialogue, if it's constantly exposed to negativity and to negative experiences, of course, that inner dialogue is going to become negative as well. So I want to come back to this subject because you've now opened up. We've talked about a little bit about a definition and we're going to start going into details on this a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to hear about yourself. The mm. Puja Taleshwar that we see today is probably not the Puja Taleshwar who was around five years Definitely ago, not. ten years ago. Ten so years ago. let's press the um, let's press the rewind button here and uh, <laughs> take us back a little bit and tell us about your journey and sure. what's led you here today. So I I grew up and um, you know I kind of felt like never good enough. And I never really knew where this feeling of not feeling good enough stemmed from. So was it that I got bullied at school? Was it that I went to a school um, which was very racist and I kind of experienced this real difference and feeling like the odd one out? Was it that I felt almost like the inadequate one in my family? I wasn't, you know, the intelligent one. I wasn't mm -hmm. the, the beautiful one. I always kind of felt like the black sheep. And right. so this kind of developed in my younger age, in my formative years. And um, as I grew up and I went to school, I would kind of fall into relationships and I would crave this validation from relationships. I would want someone else externally to tell me that I was beautiful, that I was amazing, because I didn't know how to say that to myself. I didn't know how to gain that from within me. And so I would fall into these patterns of relationships that would ultimately, um, they would reaffirm these mm. beliefs I had about myself. So if I had a belief, for example, about rejection, you know, mm. because I felt rejected at school with the, the bullying, I would have a relationship that would then, of course, would unfold into rejection. Unfold. Right? Right. Um, so I kind of spent most of that time feeling this really heavy feeling. and then. Um, you reach 18 years old and you reach uh, legal drinking age <laughs> and you start going out partying with your friends and you're carrying this, this inner baggage, right? And you don't know how to get rid of it. Right. And so you start drinking and, hey, drinking and partying and going out, that numbs the pain for a little while. So, so let's do more of that. And it's that kind of like kind a good distraction, right? Exactly. It was just a form of me numbing the pain. And when I reached my early 20s, I hit depression really bad. And I'd never experienced depression before. It felt like something that was actually kind of beyond my control. And it was at that point um, that I realized that it was time for me to really unpick these thoughts and these right. behaviors. Why was I behaving this way? Why was I feeling this way? Um, and so that's when I went down this route of really trying to understand myself better and understanding where these feelings came from. And so I kind of went down the route of coaching. I went to, you know, ashrams and stayed there for a few months. I, I did the whole traveling around and teaching um, right. You know, going to Thailand and teaching and bre being this like okay. free spirit, going to retreats, <laughs> all of this stuff. Um, and in the end, it brought me a lot closer to myself. I had to right. go through that journey to really understand and clear a lot of these things. And ultimately now I'm in a position where I can look back and feel grateful for those experiences because without them, I wouldn't be who I yeah. am today. I wouldn't be where I am today right. and I wouldn't be able to fulfill this mission of helping other people move beyond it. 
Okay, I want to ask you a question. I want to backtrack for a second. You said that you went through a stage of depression, and mm. it's no secret that hiding depression is one of the worst secrets in the Asian community, you know, the Indian community, whichever way you want to look at it. The Asian community does not readily acknowledge depression mm. quite openly. It's still a taboo. So I want to ask you, when you were going through this, a, did you acknowledge it to yourself? Did you recognize mm -hmm. that you were kind of going through some kind of depression? B, did you actually confide in family members and how did they take it? So um, my, my mom actually was really supportive and she was the one that said, look, you know, we need to kind of do something about this. We need to go to the doctors, find out. And of course you go to the doctor and they, the first thing they say is, oh, you know, here's a pill. <laughs> this will make you happy. Yeah, right. You know? And so I rejected that straight off the bat. I was oh, like, good. I don't want to depend on medication for me to, to feel happy. Awesome. I want to find an alternative way. Um, and so I kind of went to counseling and counseling was great because it helped me to kind of get a bit of awareness. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately there was no solution. The counseling was just sit on a sofa, talk to someone, <laughs> you know, like bend. Yeah be the victim oh my god this happened and that happened and I hate my life and I hate myself okay. and then at the end of the session the counselor is like okay great see you at the next session so it's like does I, exactly doesn't exactly yeah. help anyone right exactly so my my mom was really supportive but there was okay. also an element where you know I think people are afraid to talk about it because it's shameful you know parents don't want to talk about their kids going through depression because people yes. think they're going to blame the parents you know and then they feel ashamed right and also a part of it is like you know just get back into action this is just, you know, you're just in a bad mood. Like, you'll feel better tomorrow. Just get a job. Just, just you know, let's go to this guru or that guru and they'll give you some sort of raksha that you tie around your wrist and you'll be fine. Or right. you'll start waving chilies and lemons around you and hoping right. that it's going to go. I hope you're hearing this because this is scarily true, right? People do this. People actually do this. This is not a joke. People think that those things are going to be enough. And they're not because that's not where it's meant to be. Yeah. And, you know, their intentions are good. Their intentions are coming sure. from a loving place. But ultimately, we have to understand, even from their level of consciousness, they didn't grow up maybe with this epidemic right. of depression because they weren't exposed to the knowledge or the to, tools. People to what it was, had. yeah. They were exposed to this, um, this process of, just get on with it, you know, like this is life. This is how your life has to be. So just keep right. going. And that's why a lot of people now, when they reach the kind of latter part of like their life, they're full of resentment. They're full of anger. They're full of hatred because they haven't dealt with it. And so now they're having to backtrack after years of kind of pushing it away and hiding it away. And it's coming up. And they're just needing to backtrack. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. So let's just forward a little bit. You went through the depression. Mm -hmm. You took treatment to bring yourself out of the de depression. Mm -hmm. And did that treatment therefore involve, intrinsically involve you exploring different modalities, which include NLP um, and some of the other stuff that you've done? Was that part of your, your healing? Yeah, completely. So I think in order for you to be able to heal anyone else, you need to heal yourself first. You need to right. know that what you're doing actually works. We Otherwise, talked about self-love last week, right? So now went deep into the subject of self-love. Folks, if you haven't heard that and didn't see that video, go check it back out on the Mantra Therapy page, self-love. Absolutely what Pooja's talking about here. It's like me, you know saying that I'm a fitness coach, which I'm not, by the way, guys, okay? <laughs> but it's like me saying I'm a fitness coach and then just constantly eating crap and filling my body with crap and, and not working out. It's not congruent. You have Completely. to be congruent with what you're saying. So, yeah, so those modalities, they all kind of helped. And what I learned is that, you know, we have uh, a lot of issues to work through. We don't, we don't, we don't always bring them out. That's the problem. We don't always bring them out. That. That is part of the problem. So, um, so we've got a picture here now. You had, you experienced negative things in your life mm -hmm. as a child and into your teenage years, high school mm -hmm. and then college years. Mm -hmm. 
including bullying, including yeah. feeling not good enough. And some of that was inflicted by your own family members, though they may not have realized they were doing what they're doing. And mm -hmm. therefore the end result was that you ended up feeling certain negative emotions that actually started sticking and then digging a hole into your wholesome personality. And you experienced that, which ultimately led to depression. Mm -hmm. and other negative things, probably, as you said, a lack of validation and all the sort of slight NPDs, negative personality disorders that arise associated with that. Mm -hmm. And then you found your own way out of it. You rejected and shunned the allopathic medical route to take antidepressants, and you actually mm -hmm. chose to find your own way, and you healed yourself through different modalities. But you then decided you didn't stop. Sounds like you then said, okay, I think there's something really good. Um, what did you do next? So I think for me, it's, you know, healing and kind of this journey of personal development. It never really ends, right? Because there's a lot of stuff we've spent, like, so yeah. now I'm 34. So for 20 years of my life, really, I spent programming myself with these negative beliefs. And it Probably takes all 10 positive beliefs to counteract one negative one, okay? Right. So imagine how many affirmations <laughs> you have to do to clear out those negative thoughts that for 20 years you've been programming yourself to believe. That's a long Completely. time. So I think on some level, there will always be some level of healing that's required. Um, and that's just your own progression. Even now, the most successful people in the world they still have coaches. Even when they're at the top of their game, they still have coaches, you know? They don't say, oh, well, I've reached the, this point now. I'm going to stop working on myself. In fact, that's the point where they're like, you know what? Now I know I can reach this level. I want to reach even higher and right. higher. And so they keep that positivity around them to guide them. And I think um, even with healing and self-development, it's always going to be a part of you. I get that. And I think that's an important point. Um, finding a coach is something not new. It goes back to the ancient times, the ancient Eastern times from the, as far from time immemorial, the idea of having a mentor or a guru is something that has been part of all cultures. Uh, it just may or may not have been as prevalent in the Western culture in the past 50 years, but in the previous centuries, it was very much prevalent even in the West. So we shouldn't feel ashamed. I think the upshot of that and just kind of closing on that thread of discussion um, we shouldn't feel ashamed about having a mentor, a coach, a guru, because those are valuable people in our evolution, in our journey. We don't have to do it all by ourselves. And I think having false pride to think that we have to do it by ourselves is actually more damaging and detrimental to our evolution than actually acknowledging and saying, look, yeah, I'm get, I need some help here. And maybe I can't trust my family, but I can trust that person over there. Yeah. And also, I think a part of that, just touching on that, a big reason why we, we maybe don't ask for help, especially in the Asian community, mm. is that we're programmed to believe that we shouldn't air our dirty laundry, that we shouldn't bring shame on our family, that we shouldn't right. talk about what's going on. And so that's why a lot of us can maybe sure. reject that help, because we, we worry that we're kind of destroying people along the way, when actually you kind of actually just need to help yourself to, to break free from those patterns. Yeah, you're going to need to break yourself. And folks, if you're, if I'd really love to hear your views on this, um, please share here right here, because this is something. If you, if you resonate with that concern, if you feel that you have been suppressed in your families, who here feels like they can't share this with their family? Who here has felt in their previous years that they had a challenge, a aspect of their personality or their life that they could not share with people close to them, though they should have been able to because of these taboos, because of these limitations? Click in and share us your views on this. And I want to bring the conversation forward to the theme of the night and really start delving into it. And for the benefit of the many viewers who've been joining in, folks, welcome. Thank you for coming on board. I know I've recognized some of the names. So people from the States have joined. It's amazing to have people from the East Coast. I got one from LA, uh, well, San Diego. <laughs> San Diego, Australia, loving the fact that so many people are joining from around the world, bringing themselves together to unite without the bullshit of dogma and my religion and your religion and your color and my color and your sex and my sex. Screw that. 
we are here because we are all Atma. We are all spiritual beings having a human, re human experience. And as long as you remember that, we can unite, we can come together and have a meaningful, mature dialogue. I could talk like this all day because I feel yeah. so passionate about people putting aside their bullshit and just coming together to talk. Um, so I'm really passionate about it. And I'm obviously honored that you feel the same way. So let's get straight down to it. Please redefine for us inner critic self-sabotage. So uh, <laughs> we'll have these voices, like we've said, and we've discussed where they come from. So the first step for you to move beyond this inner critic is to actually become the observer. So I would say stop allowing your inner critic to run on autopilot, first of all. Okay, so stop identifying yourself with, I'm not good enough, I'm rubbish at this, I'm not smart enough, I'm not thin enough, I'm not beautiful enough. Actually, kind of take a minute, step out of those thoughts, disassociate right. yourself from those thoughts, and then objectively look at them and think, okay, who do these thoughts even belong to? First of all, they may not even be your thoughts. So if we've grown up, we touched on old wives' tales, like, oh, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this, you know. Is that even your dialogue or is it just, you know, your mother's dialogue or your father's dialogue or your teacher's dialogue? Um, so that's the first thing, recognize right. that. And if it's your belief, you know, understand, okay, so what experience, what event in my life caused me to adopt this belief? So automatically, just by becoming the observer, you've already disempowered your kind of inner critic because Beautiful. instead of just allowing it to control you, you're taking a step back and thinking, actually, you know what? I'm going to analyze where this stuff comes from. So I think that's the first step, become the observer. And, um, and also another thing is to understand that a lot of the beliefs and the, the emotions they can be passed down ancestrally as well. So maybe, you know, you go to therapy, like I've been to these groups, right, where there's like loads of people sitting in a circle and they're going in and everyone's kind of going in with different things that they're talking about. Right. And it always goes down to the parents, okay? So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it is, it always seems to go back to the parents. But we can't always blame our parents because maybe – for three or four generations before them, they had just been brought up with the same behavior, you know? So if they've been brought up by people that don't know how to love themselves or they don't know how to kind of acknowledge their children, then how could they ever teach, you know, how could they treat you that way if they don't even know what it looks like themselves? So I think that's another key point. You know, it's easy for us to kind of move into the space of blaming other people. Right, but actually, without... we have the consciousness to see where they're coming from and understand that they may be doing it unconsciously themselves. And so, if that's yeah. the case, you can step away from it as well. So that's the first step. Become Love the observer. That. And then secondly, right analyze. Become the observer. Secondly, analyze. Analyze those things. I love that, you know. Um, you said write down. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you up. You said yeah. write down. Yeah, and just write down these thoughts, you know, write down these events because when you write them down and you make a note of them, automatically you start to develop this own journey of self discovery yourself. You have so much awareness, you think, okay, so, you know, I have issues with maybe rejection, okay? And so I'm attracting relationships and I'm terrified I'm just going to get rejected. So I'm either keeping people at arm's length right. or I'm kind of just like, you know, just ducking out or I'm manifesting relationships where people right. reject me, they abandon me. So understand that you've got this theme running in your life so that you can start changing it. Okay, so um, that's, that's really valuable. Um, so we've talked about observing, becoming the observer. We talked about analyzing. Mm. what else do we need to do because look let me give let's take an example let's let's pick an example folks if you if you have an example by the way if you're in a critic an example of something that we can use here in this discussion just click it in right now drop your comment in i'd love to see that which i'm sure you'd love to see some comments about what people yeah, are going through sure. and what they've been through um let's yeah okay uh, certainly for myself i think one of the things i had was i was told that you know i, I had a passion for kind of music and i had 
a desire for kind of singing and playing and doing a little bit of performance stuff. And frankly, that was crushed when I was young. I was told for, you know, by all well-wishing family members in general that, look, get some good grades, do your maths, physics, chemistry, get a good qualification in computing or law, pharmacy, or one of the safe things, accounting, et cetera, and go get a job. Forget this music thing, this performance thing, being a comedian, that can all be a side thing. Forget about that. You're not going to earn any money. And I don't know if any of, you, any of you out there can relate to wanting to turn your passion into your profession and having water doused on it, not malevolently, but innocently by people who don't understand you or who are projecting their limiting beliefs and assumptions upon you. Right, Pete? That's what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And this is a prime example of their level of consciousness. So they've never seen anyone do it. This is their model of the world. But unfortunately, what happens is, is we take on someone else's model of the world and we make it our model of the world. So they've grown up with their own set of experiences, their own set of events, and they project that onto you. And so you then end up having this belief, well, this person that, you know, is my nurturer, my parent, the person right. who sets the rules, right? And tells me what I should and shouldn't do and who you look up to. And then that person tells you, you shouldn't do it. You can't do it. You know, imagine the level of self-doubt that gets created from the one person or, you know, the two people in your life that you hope to rely on the most. But in their minds, they're coming from a space of, I just want to protect you, right? Yeah. I want to keep you safe. Right. It's not necessarily uh, ill-meaning. It's just what they know, right? Exactly. Previous generations may have had that. You know, this is, this is the new economy. We're in a different era now. People are making money through means that we never thought of because technology has enabled us to do that. And I guess that wasn't available to people before. So, that, so what you're saying is, and kind of just summarizing that particular point, what you're talking about is be aware of inherited beliefs. Exactly. Be aware of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's good. Um, it's good to know that I'm kind of switched on and uh, on fire here. You're still listening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening. All right. Okay. So let's talk more. Let's talk. Let's talk a little bit more. What are the aspects and facets of our inner critic and the self sabotage system, if we can call it that, uh, okay. plaguing us? So. It starts with, you know, we've talked about ancestral, then we have other programs, so we call them core beliefs, okay? So these core core beliefs beliefs are developed from when we're born until we're seven years old. Everything goes into our subconscious minds, literally everything. And if you consider that 90% of our brains are our subconscious mind, and, you know, something like 10% is your conscious mind, is that the that, percentage? Is that is that is that where you is that what you guys learn in your um you know psychology training? That's amazing. Yeah, it's, exactly. What a, what a, what, what, so what, what, a, what a skewed balance. Yeah, it's it's a huge part. So you know that's our main driver. So if you're seeing loads of like messed up stuff happening in your household, or you know you, you're being told all these things, of course you're going to be um, being driven by these thoughts. Your life is going to be controlled by these things. And that point, we don't have the level of consciousness that we do now as an adult where mm-hmm. we can actually objectively look at situations. We, we don't have that as children. So, of course, these thoughts are going to then br- rule us. So there's that. There's the, um, we then have the other events in our timeline that happens like we discussed with bullying or relationships or getting divorced, um, really painful things. Right. And they Um, actually leave those systems in you, right? I mean, what's the famous one, right? You get divorced and you think I'm not good enough. I'm unmarriable. I'm unlovable. Isn't that a famous one? The inner critic is saying, you're never going to find anybody who's going to love you because, you know, everybody else thought you're an asshole. Or, you know, you think you're an asshole. But the thing is, we're all assholes in some kind of way. I'm going to keep using the word A word because guess what? Most of us are a-holes in some way. I don't think it's a crime that we're a-holes. I think we need to own the fact that we're a-holes and rein it in so it doesn't harm us, but be humble enough to accept it so we can actually improve ourselves. That's what I think. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, can I get a hallelujah here? Can I get an amen hallelujah. in the house? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get an amen in the house. <laughs> That's got to be true, right? Stop thinking you're not asshole. You're in a, you, you don't want to think you're not an asshole and you're perfect and you're just amazing and you've got no flaws, right? Then where's the scope for humility? Where's the scope for inner reflection? Where is the scope to refine oneself internally, refines one character, right? And if you, all, yeah. if, and if you only think you're an asshole, then that's not great because you're not going to get very far. You're just going to yeah. stay in this inner critic. In fact, the inner critic is going to win the battle. Exactly. And it's also, you know, there's a law of duality, light and dark, yin and yang. And so even with us, we have lightness and we have darkness. But the problem is, is that a lot of us try to hide this darkness because we're ashamed of it. Right. right. And then actually it magnifies even more because if you keep resisting something, then it's, it's just eventually gonna... just going to break through. So that's another part. Okay, there's the inner critic. And of course, we're trying to silence the inner critic. Um, but actually, there's another part where it's like, you shouldn't just be so resisting of it. Actually, use it as a tool. So if your inner critic is coming up, use it as a tool, as an ally, for it to be like a torch that's actually just shining a light on what you need to work on within yourself. Love that. What it's blocking you from, so that you can just move on. If we get an a, like a illness or a scratch or something in our body, we see it, right? And we go and we get it fixed by the, you know, we get the medication, we get the help, we get what we need to do. So we should approach our thoughts and our feelings in exactly the same way. I really like that, and I think you just touched on a point that I think resonates for me in particular, which is um, people who have OCD. A lot of people have. OCD folks, um, that's obsessive compulsive disorder. A lot of people don't even realize they have OCD. Uh, how, what is the relation between OCD and our inner critic? I, and I, I'm raising this question because you just said something quite insightful there. You said that d you don't necessarily need to destroy the inner critic. I mean, we talked about silencing the inner critic, but actually what we're really saying is selectively silencing the inner critic or learning to know when to turn the volume down on the inner critic and where to listen to the inner critic and actually take something positive. So where does the inner critic come into play with OCD? To be honest, I don't know <laughs> the scientific reasons of kind of what causes that, but I can only imagine with OCD, like anything, there's something within you, you know, it's right. like anxiety. There's something within yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. There's an anxiety there. So I think, you know, the first thing is acknowledging that it's there and kind of tuning into that feeling. What right. is it that's causing you to, to behave this way? What is not going to happen if you don't? You know, like what is not going to happen? Everything, we have a driver for it. There's something that drives that behavior. So I think it's, it's important to understand that. Obviously, you know, with any kind of healing modality, we're not doctors, right? We'll always say if there's a medical condition, go and explore the medical condition. But sure. everything stems from an emotional imbalance in some way, right. whether it's a physical illness, whether it's a behavior. So really it's understanding how to kind of dive into that, but also getting the right support to help you do that. Don't try and do everything yourself because maybe then you will have like a, you'll have a breakdown and you won't have someone there to hold you up. Whereas right. when you go in and kind of work with a professional, you know that you're in a safe space where they can hold your space. Right. I get that. And I think that's really important. But just elaborate a little bit about where listening to your inner critic could be actually a valuable thing. Let's, can you give us an example? I think it's more the observer and it's more your level of self-awareness, you know? So it's kind of understanding, okay, this inner critic, what is it blocking me from doing in my life? So mm -hmm. instead of resisting it, what are you actually blocking me from achieving in my life? And change the driver of it, you know? So observe it and be like, oh, that's interesting that this is coming up. Let me explore it. That's how you can befriend your inner critic, by using it for good. To right. kind of use it as a, as a tool of self-discovery, I would say that that is the key thing. And in terms of tuning, um, I could talk all night about this topic, so I want to really get to some tips for people as well. Sure. Um, 
there's other things that you can do to tune your inner critic out. So the other thing is once you recognize the voices don't actually belong to you and you've done that exploration, mentally start to actually put a, attach a voice to it. So, um, you know, if it's like your dad or your mum, put their voices on those thoughts because that helps you to, again, instantly recognize that it's not your thought. So if there's a recurring thought, put a little voice on it. Or you can even play around with that even more and just give it a really funny voice, you know? Like, have some fun with it. Give it a cartoon voice. Give it a villain voice. Give it, you know, whatever voice feels right for you so that you can actually see the value in that critic rather than seeing it as this thing that's controlling you. Just see it as like a a playful friend that's just there. And also, you know, sometimes our inner critic is just there because really it thinks that it's trying to keep us safe from pain, you know? So that's what I've got to understand. The intention of the inner critic is not to kind of (laughs) knock us out. It's actually trying to keep us safe. I like that. I like that a lot. And I think, uh, and Nick has said a really cool point here. Nick Osborne who's listening in. Hi, Nick. Uh, he says, acknowledge it in order to let it go. Yeah, mm-hmm. acknowledge it. You can acknowledge it. I think mean, acknowledgement is a part of it, right? You're not necessarily saying, hey, forget you in a critic. But you may want to hear what it's saying because there may be something valuable. But you've just got to learn to distinguish between, as you say, you either relabel that inner voice that that particular thought as not coming from you and attribute it to your mom your dad whoever else it was or make up a cartoon character and attribute those thoughts to where they ought to have their origin uh, rather than assuming they're just yours and then by attributing them and then acknowledging those thoughts you have the chance to then recreate a fresh reality like that yeah completely and also you know if you have a resistance and you think oh it's just too much work. I can't be bothered with this. This inner crit- critic is just going to control my life. Right. You know, actually sit back and think, how is it serving me <laughs> to hold on to this inner critic? Like, other point. than the fact that I'm kind of learning more about myself, then once you've learned about yourself, you need to take action and actually do something to, right. to help remove it, right? But also, it's like, how is it serving me to hold on to this genuinely? What value is your inner critic bringing to your life? Most of the time, it's actually stopping a lot of people from moving forward. And we touched on this before, you know, who would you be? What would you be, do or have? Where would you be in your life if this inner critic didn't even exist? Maybe not on this call, right? So (laughs) maybe it's a good thing that you have it. But ultimately, where would you be in your life? So why would you want to hang on to it? Why would you want to allow it to control you? Right, absolutely. And I think that's a lesson that I know... Uh, Pujo who's tuned in as well said something really cool that you know she's teaching her child from a young age that you don't have to confine yourself to the traditional means of growth and education and career that everybody else has subscribed to. You can make your own independent decisions you may make mistakes along the way, but of course, mistakes aren't really mistakes. They're lessons. And this is an important yeah. lesson, of course, right? Mistakes are and lessons. Al- yeah. And also, you know, this is where the whole inner advisors things come in. So right. you Let's need to that. visualize, if you've not had that support network, if you've not had people around you that can show you love or can express love, so you don't even have a model to compare it to, right. think of Famous people that you really admire, you know, is it Oprah Winfrey? Maybe it's like a sports player. Someone that you really aspire to and just visualize that they're a piece of you. And if you have these negative thoughts that come up, instead of going to your inner critic for advice, which is always going to be like, no, 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 don't do that. that. Ask what the person that you really respect and value would do, you know? So whether it's like a little Buddha inside you, whether it's Oprah Winfrey, just just connect with that energy. And again, that helps you to, to make sure that your inner critic doesn't have a grip, has, doesn't have so much power. Okay. I love that. You know, asking your inner advisor as opposed to your inner critic. Love that. Um, let me ask, and I, I know the audience, if you're listening, just shoot in with any kind of questions here. This is the time firing with your questions. I want to ask you a question. So 
imagine I have an inner critic and I'm being told that I'll never succeed in a particular career. Uh, it's, just, it, it, it's something that I have an interest in. It's something I'm probably quite good at, but I'll probably never make it big because I don't have the money, the finance, the capabilities or the support system around me to do that. I then am at a crossroad. The one side of me is saying those four negative things, those barriers. And there's the other part of me saying, but I really like it. How can we learn to tame the inner critic to take us in the right direction whilst not being so foolhardy that we jump in and totally ignore the inner critic and then actually make a pig's ear of things because some of those four things were true and we didn't listen to them because we ignored them. So the first thing is you give yourself a point of reference. Okay. So where in your life have you done these things and actually been quite good at it? I'm sure it's not like a hundred percent where you've not had any experience of doing these things. Otherwise you wouldn't even have a passion for wanting to do it in the first place. Sure. So making a list of evidence, you know, so your inner critic is saying, Oh no, you're going to mess up. You're going to do this. But actually write down a list of points. Well, actually no, you know, there's been like three or four times where I've done this and I've really enjoyed it. And I actually did it quite well. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, if your inner critic is focusing on all these excuses and all these reasons why something can't work, right, then actually you've just coached yourself and given <laughs> yourself some clues on what you need to move forward. So if you need support, that means that you want to go out there and start connecting with the right people, maybe people that have already done what you've done in the first place so that you can get there. Because the finances... It's thinking, okay, instead of thinking, oh, I haven't got it, think, how can I get it? How can I get more finances to support this dream? I love and that. It's yeah, I love that. The perfect blend of the masculine and the feminine energy, right? So the feminine is like, I'm going to surrender, I'm going to meditate, and I'm going to just visualize what I want. And that's great. But then you have the other part of you that has to take action. And so to give you a really nice analogy about that, um, one of my teachers, she gave me a great analogy and she said, it's like when people have a vision board and they really want to manifest their soulmates. And they put all right. these cards and pictures of their dream lover on this, like, uh, this vision board. And then they're at home and they're visualizing every day. Right. And then their friend comes over and knocks on the door and says, hey, I've got tickets for this concert tonight. Let's okay. go to this concert. And they're like, no, I want to stay home. I really need to visualize and get right. in the zone. When actually the soulmate is there at the concert waiting for them. So <laughs> you have to wow. take action as well. So you have to take action as well. Love that. Made a note of that as well. And I think the point that you said about asking questions, that really resonates because it's a really CBT kind of thing to do as well, to mm. ask yourself a better question. Also to intervene, as you said, and actually show yourself evidence to the contrary. And, mm. um, you know, fellow healer and life coach, Snow is kind of just one of her famous mantras, you know, prove to yourself evidence to the contrary that you have achieved something before and that, you know, you are of somebody of worth, you know, and I think that's a massive thing because I think a lot of people and I myself get into the situation where, you know, I, for many, many times, like it, for, for example, music, I look, I listen to other piano players and singers and I think, oh man, I, I, I couldn't reach that note. I, I can't play piano like that person. And what's the point? I just can't do it. I, I just, I'll never be as good as that. And I just, what's the point of me doing this? And then I sometimes click back and I say, well, wait a second. I actually did some really cool piano stuff last year and I'll go listen to a recording of me singing or playing and I think, hey, that's not bad actually. And then you just kind of build a pattern of proving to yourself that you actually can do something. And we're so focused on finding reasons why we're not good enough that we forget that actually we are fairly cool and capable human beings. Yeah. And, you know, self-sabotage is nothing, but, nothing more than a bad habit. And bad habits can be changed. Changed. But in order to change them, you need to take action, you know. Right. And this isn't all just practical steps. Of course, there's emotional healing. You know, there's painful events that we've been through in our past that we need to heal. There's triggers. You know, right. it's not easy to just block out the past. And, of course, that's where you can get support to clear the pain so you're not getting triggered by these events. Yeah. And once you do that, 
it's a lot easier to move into this action taking kind of space where you're kind of doing these practical steps as well but you need to blend both together for you to move forward uh easier said than done but it does need to take that action and i think you've given us some real gems actually along the way so folks your last chance if you have any other questions click in and share your questions Pooja. in the meantime I hope you don't mind, but I feel that I have to ask you some rapid fire questions. It is that time where we just go for, go for it. Are you ready for this? Hit me with it. Hit with me. Hit me with it. I'm just gonna, okay, ready. They're just coming anyway. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. You ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Number one, self-healing or bungee jumping? Self-healing, 100%. You don't have to be upside down to do it either. So Love it, cool. love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, ayahuasca or apple juice? Ayahuasca. I've never tried it, but I am, you know, I Whoa. would definitely. Okay. Yeah. Don't take too much. <laughs> Superhero movie or rom-com? You know what? A rom-com. I can't be a romantic comedy. I'm a chick flick lover. But what about Robert Downey Jr. and... Chris Evans and all those honky superhero yeah, guys. They're oh, cool. Rom-com. Rom-com. <laughs> yeah. I love love. So love is all the way. All right. All right. Okay. Chinese whispers or playtime on Twitter? Playtime on Insta. <laughs> playtime on Insta. Okay. We're rolling. All right. All right. Your favorite type of food and why? Italian because I love pasta. I can't get enough of pasta. Okay, and okay. I don't think my body's too happy with my love for pasta. But you can always it. switch to lentil pasta, which is lower in carbs and higher in protein. Yeah, maybe for like five days a week and then those two days on the weekend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Best three ways to drive your loved ones insane. Uh, tell them you're joining a cult is probably the first uh. one. Um, okay blasting heavy metal music 24 7 on really loud volume would be uh -huh. another <laughs> one more and one the more third word which uh, i'm sure especially asian parents would love is you know telling them that you don't believe in marriage ah, <laughs> that's the one tell them you don't believe in marriage tell them you're never going to get married yeah, exactly. out. <laughs> love it absolutely love that one um if you had an hour or an afternoon spare, what would you most likely do with it and why? Write. You know, for me, writing has always been my outlet. It's my way of connecting up. So 100% writing. Okay. Your favorite color and why? Oh, you know, it used to be pink for a long time. I identified myself with pink. Um, but actually, I'm a lot more drawn to teal. Mm -hmm. I think teals are really cool. Teal. Color, yeah, it's okay. a good color, and it looks good on darker skin, you know. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm hearing that. <laughs> One top mental health tip that you could share with the audience. I think really it's just getting the support and realizing that the problem, you know, or the way that you feel, is just an issue that can be resolved. It's not your whole life, so just get the support and move through it. Okay. I, I like that. So let's summarize for the audience. I've made a couple of notes and let's go through those. I've got S. S is for silence. Silence your inner critic. O, become the observer. Distinguish between you and your thoughts. Don't assume that you are your thoughts. Make that distinction and by detaching yourself from you yourself to your thoughts, you start realizing that your thoughts don't own you. You own your thoughts and you can choose which ones to regard and which to disregard. And then th A, A is for analyze the origin of false beliefs and fears as they may not be your own. You, as you rightly said, they could be your inherited beliefs from your parents, from your family, from your loved ones. And make a note because note writing will help to embed it and allow you to better make those distinctions. And I've got another A, which is accessing your inner advisors and taking advantage of your inner advisors rather than your inner critic. And that could be nothing more than your positive conscience, I guess. I mean, and I've got Q, ask better questions. 
because asking better questions will allow you to make the distinctions and break the chain of being ruled by your inner critic. Anything else to add? That's it. Just, and also, I guess the final thing is be compassionate. You know, it's not Ooh, okay. an overnight fix. So if you kind of find yourself doing these things and falling into old patterns, just be kind to yourself. Every habit, it takes time to learn. Like when you're riding a bike, you have the stabilizers on first. So just take it easy on yourself. The fact that you're even taking action to try and make a change is something that you should feel proud of doing. Love that. Yeah. So just be kind to yourself. And that means having some compassion. And don't ignore the inner critic necessarily, but just learn to get better at turning up or down the volume on that inner critic because it can serve you. It doesn't exactly. have to be your enemy. It can serve you. You've just got to learn to tame the inner critic rather than necessarily permanently mute the inner critic. There you go. I think that makes sense. Pooja, tell us about how we can learn more about you. Tell us what okay, you can find out. So you guys can find me on Facebook, uh, Emotional Expert UK, or you can check out my website, which is www emotionalexpert.com uh, and I do lots of emotional healing and cleansing and help you to clear a lot of your stuff from your timelines um, so feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to help Pooja you've already helped and I'm sure that just judging by the comments and the love that we've been getting on this live session the benefit of this session will transcend this short discussion and hopefully make inroads into people's lives. I really hope that for all of you who've been listening to this live and who will listen to the broadcast afterwards in your own time zones, that this has served as some powerful distinctions that you can make in your life to start to tame your inner critic, not necessarily silence it, but to tame it and really start owning and taking control of your life again. I think that's all we're trying to do here at Urban Spirituality um, at Mantra Therapy. This is what we do. This is what we love doing. We always have cool guests. We're fortunate that we've had a super cool guest here, Pooja. I think uh, we also need to get some other cool guests on. We'll be having Mayura and I think there's a very fine gentleman called Mithilesh who is going to join us at some stage. We'll have some yeah. really good guests. They'll be joining us and we'll be having more discussions. Folks, if there's any particular topic that you'd like us to work on, please share that as well. I want to have a list of four or five hot exciting and popular topics, concerns, challenges that you would like to see discussed on these shows. Remember, we try to keep this free of judgment and bullshit. So we keep it real. Share your love and your comments and questions. We'll try and cover more topics. Last but not least, I may humbly leave you with my request. If you haven't already done so, please like our Facebook page. You have two pages to like now. You have Emotional Expert and you have our Mantra Therapy page, so, which will be renamed to Urban Spirituality, by the way, um, as we rebrand. So please like the Mantra Therapy page, put a like on there and join our group. We have a group called Urban Spirituality Mantra Therapy where we'll be posting really cool stuff. Pooja, I'm just going to be really bold and ask you to share something from your recent creations on that group because I think mm -hmm. you'll be able to add more value and really reciprocate with an awesome audience there. So please sure. like the page, join the group, and be ready for those of you who are free. There's still spaces on our amazing fundraising spiritual retreat to Tuscany, three weeks to go, just over 11th to 15th of October. You are cordially invited to join us in the mountains for an incredible retreat on a hundred acre, 400 year old Machiavellian estate with a gourmet restaurant for great activities for a weekend of release, enlightenment and rejuvenation with great people like this lady to my left. Find out more at mantratherapy.co.uk, like our page. And once again, thank you for joining us and being party to this incredible chat. And Pooja, please take a bow. You've been just absolutely awesome thank as always. <laughs> nice speaking to you guys. And wait, before we go, Prash, mm -hmm. where's your singing, your purple rain? That's what I'm waiting Oh, man, for. no way. You're not going to make me do that now. Without a piano? Oh, my God. Come on, right. shrink that inner critic. Shrink Listen that inner shrink. critic. Yes, the inner <laughs> critic saying you can't sing without a piano. 
You can't do that. It's crime. And your voice, I haven't warmed up. I haven't got a piano. The inner critic's talking. All right, all right, all right. Turn the volume down. Inner critic is down. Okay. I never meant to cause you any sorrow. I never meant to cause you any pain. I only want to one time see you laughing. I only want to see you laughing in the purple rain. Purple rain, purple rain. There you there go. There you go. Well done. Hey, hey. <laughs> Woo. All right. No piano. That's go. crazy. That's crazy. I should not be singing without it, but hey. Well, look, you silenced your inner critic. Right I silenced there. my inner critic live, live, live. We did it live, folks. Okay. <laughs> We can have more fun next week. Tune in. We'll have some more fun next week. And we're going to be seeing Pooja. Reach out to her and reach out to the other great guests we've been having on the show. And we have a fresh podcast coming out soon. Watch out for that. We have an incredible interview coming everybody's way on iTunes. Watch out. Pooja, take a bow. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Fresh. Take Worldwide care. audience out there. Thank you so much. Say your prayers and keep it clean, lean, and we will see you soon. Hey folks, thanks so much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed this episode and as with all our episodes, found something to inform, inspire and empower you in your personal and spiritual journeys in life. As always, feel free to leave a little love through your ratings and comments, subscribe and share it with those you care about. And take your personal and spiritual evolution to the next level by joining us on one of our unique events, workshops or retreats or taking advantage of our personal and professional coaching packages. Find out more about us at mantratherapy.co.uk. I'm your host, Prash K. This is Urban Spirituality, and we will catch you on the next episode.